Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. You know you've made it when you don't need to state your last name, like Dame Edna and Kylie. And so it is for Hamish and Andy. But when they made their first appearance as a gangly comedy duo 15 years ago, no one could or would have predicted their longevity or success. Their secret seems to be rather simple. If they're having fun, then so too will their fans. Hamish and Andy are best mates who've literally made it their business to have a fantastic time. Good afternoon, everyone! Hamish and Andy have never done things by halves. This is what we need. And today is no different. More importantly, keep your hands up. <laughs> They're planning on broadcasting their radio show, Crowd Surfing. Two. One. They're relying on their fans to carry them aloft for a whole two hours. It is the ultimate leap of faith. You're incredible! You're incredible! Ah. Now come aboard, Jack. Okay, that's a Titanic reference. It also means you drown. And he's gone. He's in the, air. the pair have been surfing this wave of popularity for 15 long years. Come aboard, Andrew. Ah. Warning. I'm in. Career ending interview with Liz Hayes. But always um, knowing that <laughs> at any time they could be dumped. Thanks well, for done. having us. <laughs> You're wondering when people might be over you. D does that linger in the back of your head? Oh, only in the sense that once they are, someone will tap us on the shoulder and go, OK, guys, you've had enough. Yeah. And I think at that stage we'll go, yes, we, we suspected <laughs> okay, this was okay. coming. <laughs> we, you, so we, somebody will have to tap you on that? <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll, I'll be hiding. Guys, you keep... Just, just take him. I'll, 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 just, I'll just find Andy. Andy, quick, quick, lock the door. Where the keys? <laughs> and wow, will you look at how tiny those bikes are? It's been an amazing ride. <laughs> go, boy! Andy Lee, 36, and Hamish Blake, 35, have built their media careers off the back of one gigantic adventure. Two mates just having fun. I'm taking my order. This, well, this is TGI and monkeys. Oh! oh. <laughs> So how do you describe your relationship? It's changed. It changes. Uh, From what to what? Oh, my God, no. I'm just finding out now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're kind of bright-eyed and, and we're still best friends, but um, it changes when you realise there's a lot of other people relying on a friendship. And also, I mean, I reckon it becomes more of a marriage. You go, you, you it does. have all the honeymoon period when you're first getting together and you're learning lots about each other. Um, it's, it, I'd say there's elements of it that, you know, some mates would never go through. Like, I think we have bonds that are deeper than you would ever maybe get with just a normal friendship because we've kind of done this weird thing where we accidentally... Our friendship kind of somehow became our job, which is an odd thing to go through. I think we make people ring up and say, I want some of that sweet, sweet bag or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They may not wear suits and ties, but theirs is a very grown-up, multi-million dollar business. I think you can lucky dip it, and the choice is, do you want to lucky dip it? And every day, there's a lot of serious brainstorming with their team to keep the laughs coming. Yes, you're in a business together, so... Which is odd. But you have to invent rules. And I suppose one of the big ones there is, we just have to be friends first. The whole point of this is fun. So if this stops being fun, or if this is clinical, and, and if this is a facade and not really working, then every, nothing's worth it. Like, the whole... that's th just not worth it. Just because they're animals... <laughs> Before all of this started, what did you truly think you would do with yourselves in life? I, I did think I was going to be an accountant until the end of year 12. I was studying computer science and I thought I was going to be um, in... A, I thought I was going to make robots in artificial intelligence. But then I got to uni and we discovered um, other children were far smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> and this was our private residence. <laughs> the grounds. Um, you're the first person we've ever bought in here. Yeah, love your courtyard. We still yeah. tend, to the, tend to the grounds on a daily basis. Thanks to a mutual friend, the computer geek and the aspiring accountant first met at Melbourne University in 2001. I loved the bit where you said we could go to the pub soon. <laughs> in what was then known as the Commerce Courtyard. In all seriousness, what was it that connected you two? I mean, it, it sounds like a oh, set-up date. It, well, laughter. 
It has to be. I think we were just we just were mucking around, and and I and maybe more so me because it was like my first couple of days on campus. And you were really poor, so I was maybe very poor. maybe a chance for someone to buy him some beers. And 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 <laughs> when we, and he was laughing, I could hear the jangling of loose chains. <laughs> <laughs> The boys clicked. Hey, Ando. And over countless games of pool and unlimited beers, they forged a friendship that would see them swap their uni careers for comedy. How many ideas would come across a snooker table? Plenty, yeah, actually. Yeah. Some things that have gone on to, you know, work or become much bigger things have just started with the phrase, do you think it would be funny if... etc., hmm, etc. Et How often do you get a really bad idea? All the time. All the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, we don't specifically say it to each other, but usually it's this. It's just, hmm, mm, mm. good work. Do you want another beer? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other, th I think, I find that we look for things that are fun rather than funny. With their schoolboy looks, they started out on radio, then performed on stage and later television. Yes. The audience loving their brand of humour. We sing a choir all the time. They don't even know about it. And it's wicked. Much of it based on their own experiences. You were in a choir, weren't you? I was in a choir. I was one of Australia's <laughs> premier choristers. We should actually probably do a separate story on that. And listen, by the way, you were in the Scouts. I was, I was a Scout. I was a bit of a... Show us your top ten knots, mate. I was a bit of a goody two-shoes. <laughs> I was never in the Scouts. Tell oh, me. Well, yes, Dib Dib. They'd say Dob Dob, which is do our best. It's an acronym. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. No, it would have been great for us to meet um, <laughs> earlier when we were 11 years old in the Scouts and in a choir and done, just been just some the cool dudes. Guys. Just, I'd be, I'd be able to sing in a very high voice about how Andy's making a fire from almost nothing. <laughs> Hamish and Andy grew up in Melbourne, both the products of strong families. For Hamish, his grandfather Donald Collins was a key influence in his life. He was an awesome, awesome man. Like he, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of stories I could tell you about Pop, but he essentially came from a real background of just back yourself. Like his dad kind of mortgaged the farm and and backed himself in a running race and won and bought the farm next door. And Pop was a bit of an athlete. Like he, like on a sentimental side, for me, he always. Uh, encapsulated like the perfect blend of fun and grit like he was a gritty guy Andy is part of a tightly knit clan with his sister Alex older brother Cam and their parents Michael and Margaret Andy ensures they get together most weekends give me a, a little bit of a snapshot of your your brother Type of type of brother. <laughs> Straight, Straight out of the blocks, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> Pretend he's not here. Uh, <laughs> he's, but remember, he is. <laughs> he's a caring, uh, giving, um, enthusiastic uh, lover of life. I mean, he's a bit of a bogan at heart. He loves a beer at the pub. He'll have a palmer over a posh meal. Mm. But Alex, I, I read something that you wrote. He, and he's lucky to be alive, really, ultimately, as an adult, because he has, like, 13 stitches in his bump. Yeah, and <laughs> other stitches are all over the place. I think and mum, the rest of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mum's always said that, yeah, we're excited that he made it to adulthood, because he just had, I think, no fear um, growing up and was very adventurous and, yeah, would be on roofs or up trees or... Well, we, we nearly lost him, at, you know, when he was one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, what yeah. happened? He had he... epiglottitis, and so... We... And I did not all the wrong things. I tried to lie him down and um, took him to the doctor and he said take him straight into the Royal Children's. But when we got there, you know, they took him away straight away and had tubes down his throat and... Uh, they, so they... he was in intensive care mm. for a week, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. Oh. But they did say another hour and we would have lost him. So that... that... Makes him kind of special, really. It does. Yeah. And it's... Honestly, the first time I've ever seen Mike cry on the way home from the hospital, he said, it was, it was close, we, we nearly lost him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, behind the scenes with Mrs Hamish and Andy. As soon as we started talking, I thought, thanks for me. Clear Bachelor of the Year, I thought he was a bit of a sleaze bag, maybe. Their exciting new TV project... <gasps> The doctor has turned around and said, Oh my God, is he dead? And little Sonny steals the show. Hi, That's next on 60 Minutes.
Hamish Blake and Andy Lee have been part of the Australian entertainment industry for 15 years. And tonight, at the Logies, they are celebrating with their partners Zoe Foster Blake and Rebecca Harding. I mean, these public events, uh, good or bad? They're fun. They're, fun. They're, They're pretty fun. They're not very hard. They're very, a bit, we say not very hard for us, but these guys get to have to prepare oh, for it. Oh, it's Zoe, easy. Zoe just went for a run was like, oh, I just zipped into the dress. <laughs> She's still, still got her sneakers on underneath. Hamish's wife Zoe has her own public profile as an author and entrepreneur. They were friends long before they married. Now, as I understand it, you met Hamish and Andy at the same time. I did. So the big question is, why Hamish? <laughs> <laughs> why not Andy? <laughs> um, our sense of humour is very similar. So as soon as we started talking, I thought, he's funny. I like that one. Well, how do you describe your husband then? What words do you use to describe Hamish? He's my muse. He's my, he's my business advisor. He's my creative support and bounce, the idea sort of sounding board. He's... A beautiful dad and husband. He's amazing. He's my best friend, and I probably don't say it to you Thanks enough, <laughs> but I say it to everybody else. I because... just need to get these tapes if we. Can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you can't get me. I can get you. I definitely can. If there was one role to rival all others for Hamish, it's being a dad. Oh, one of these and the magic shoes you've got on. Come there. With his joyful three-year-old son Sonny. Life could hardly get any better. OK. But it will when he and Zoe's second child arrives in a few months' time. <laughs> What's this? Oh, you wanted to be on TV. My goodness, look at you. <laughs> I don't so know. Liz. You're a good mix of mum and dad, aren't you? Hi, Hi Liz. <laughs> Hi there, Sonny. Yeah, far away. Yeah. Ask me anything. <laughs> Parenthood has changed everything, including Hamish's work. There's just a lot of stuff where I just wouldn't be doing it now that I'm a dad. Yes, yeah, so you've actually made a conscious decision. Oh, yeah. Not that I think I had, I was particularly, you know, blasé about my life and personal safety, but it just changes. Which means for Hamish, no more dangerous stunts. And keep my cool in front of the tribe. Have mercy. Oh, 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 oh. Obviously not. Like the Amazon bullet ant initiation ceremony, involving the most painful insect bite known to man. There was nothing I could do to help him, so I essentially stood by in shock at the reaction. The pain was excruciating and relentless, and in the end, Hamish was hospitalised. Unbelievable. You look a lot like a man now, though, just so you know. I grew an extra testicle. <laughs> I hated that, and I knew they were doing it, but we were at different time zone, obviously, and I didn't hear from him for a long time because he couldn't text, obviously. Um, but the producer just texted me going, we're at hospital, it's OK, everything's fine. I'm like, he's on morphine. I'm like, bad, 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 bad <laughs> things. So I was pretty annoyed. <laughs> that could I was be, pretty annoyed. That I could be so a chapter annoyed. in the end of the Hamish and Zoe book, <laughs> bad, 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 bad things. I was pretty annoyed. Pretty annoyed. <laughs> chapter 8. <laughs> I did a very weak one yesterday. I did a really yeah, strong one. <laughs> I saw it. I uh, see perfect match. Yeah. Right there. Exactly. Rebecca Harding was a uni student when she first met Andy at a cafe three years cafe. ago. She was the waitress, not a good one. Um, I just witnessed two people complaining about her. <laughs> that I spent true? too much time talking to customers. I knew everything. I knew the lady Sarah and I knew about her dog spotty yeah, and just forgot to put her order just in. didn't know what she wanted for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you hesitated. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he he hadn't had a girlfriend in a while. Um, he was clear Bachelor of the Year. I thought he was a bit of a sleaze bag, maybe. Thanks. Um, That's nice. Well, no, but he's a bit sweeter than I actually was um, picturing. Yeah. He's a really sweet, kind, generous person, which this is not I just the thought. Brand. I'm uh, a yeah, tough, he's I'm like a tough guy. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was, it was a lot sweeter than than I was expecting. Please don't turn the page. Perhaps there was no sweeter gesture than when Andy wrote and published this book, especially for his nephew George. 
but it's no surprise to the Lee family, which strives to make every moment count. That's since Andy's mum Margaret nearly died when she contracted the rare disease cerebral vasculitis 20 years ago. It's just after Christmas and yeah. you've basically woken up, went to the toilet and couldn't find your way back to your bed. And, wow. And then, and then from there you were pretty much bedridden and, yeah. and but, lost your marble. But bed. Andy was the one who... Had I, to put up with yeah, it. Andy had to deal with it all. I think we were all affected. Um, it was it was a certainly a strange thing to see um, someone lose their way. Margaret lost her memory and her mobility, and even today is still way. recovering. So it was probably eight eight months, six months, where you were six months. She was in the hospital and in not and quite hospital. with Four it. Months. So mm. it affected us all. Like we yeah. oh. we all saw. Yeah, it's a powerful impact when your mum yeah. uh, something happens to your mum and you're mm. all quite young still. Mm. It's a strange thing to go in and um, we would introduce ourselves to mum every day. She didn't know who we were. She knew we were friendly though. She knew we were someone we could talk to, but yeah, yeah it was a different scenario or setting in the, in the, in the, in the hospital room each day. Yeah. It was you know, hard because it was a long time. That was the thing. Oh. The end result though is I think a very, very tight unit. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Action. That strong sense of family also extends to Hamish and Andy's business. Um, Rhino, Rhino are childhood friends as well. Yeah, more teenage friends yeah. and adult friends. And kept it going. Mates Ryan Shelton and Tim Bartley are an integral part of the production company. Together, they are now working on their latest venture, True Story. <sighs> Oh. Bizarre, funny, extraordinary tales from everyday Australians. Bang like this. And I sort of jumped and the doctor jumped and the nurse jumped. <gasps> the doctor has turned around and said... Oh my God, is he dead? And the girl, oh, the nurse, she said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm Stories that are then dramatically played out Thank by you. actors. We made it. No thanks to this dickhead. It's been over two years of thinking about it and trying to get it right, and um, we feel we've got it right. Welcome to the world of ratings. Yeah. Um, see, already it going well, like I mean, that. It, it, who knows? Like, you just go, I don't want to sound flippant, but like every TV show, it might work, it might not, and that's all right. Mm. But we hope it does. We hope people like it. <clears throat> um, we like, like being scared, like scared of a challenge. And their challenge tonight in Melbourne is keeping the fans happy. Hold me, Aladdin. Hold me. I am your princess. For a full two hours, they've been asked to raise their idols up and keep them up there. A big ask. Yet, there's no doubt the fans loved every minute. Say this, I realise you are in the business of making people feel good. Oh, that's well. what you do. We, and that's a nice today. thing to say, but today I feel like we're in the business of people making us feel good. Yeah, true. And wow. that was awesome. Perfect. 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 That was awesome. Well done. Thanks, mate. Wow. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> was, that fun? was that fun? Can you say, Enjoy that? Can you say um, thanks for joining me, Liz? Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Sonny. It's been my pleasure.